Thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. AI algorithms might be able to identify you from the way that your body moves when you walk. Let's talk about how. If you're new here, my name's Jordan and I'm a PhD student and science communicator. And about a week ago, I posted a video on TikTok on gait recognition that a lot of people ended up being interested in. The original video was actually in response to claims that if you were wearing a mask, facial recognition systems wouldn't be able to identify you, which A, isn't true necessarily, but B, your face isn't the only biometric feature that is unique to you that can be used to identify you. In fact, there are a lot of other options in this area. Some other options include things like heart rate recognition, where you can recognize people's heart rates via video. But for the purposes of this video, we'll focus on algorithms that can identify you via your gait and detect changes in your gait that might be important for both identifying you or for potentially beneficial reasons. But before we get too far into it, let's make sure we're on the same page about what we're talking about. In particular, and this applies to pretty much every form of biometric identification using algorithms, we're not talking about a system that can somehow extrapolate your identity solely from the way that your body moves when you walk, at least not without something to compare that to where your identity is known from that data. We're also not necessarily even talking about identifying you as in you as a person via your gait. We might be talking about identifying changes in your gait that are associated with the onset of things like Alzheimer's or looking at training athletes or people in rehabilitation programs to recover from stroke. In fact, when I was an undergrad, we did a gait recognition project for one of my classes where we measured how people's gaits changed when they did things like carried large boxes, wore backpacks, or otherwise had loads added to their body that would change the way that you walk in order to accommodate them. And this is all to say that I think that when we talk about biometric identification or especially things like facial recognition, there's often a very negative connotation associated with it because of the surveillance implications associated with it. And while I don't want to diminish concerns around the use of biometric identifiers in that way, because that is a real concern, there was a girl who was recently kicked out of an ice skating rink because a face ID system incorrectly identifies her as someone who got into a fight a few weeks ago, which why does an ice skating rink need facial recognition? But that's besides the point. I do want to make it clear that when we talk about biometric identification systems, we're not always talking about surveillance and there are actually other use cases for these systems that can be beneficial to people. Now, when I was looking into this for this video, my first question, similar to a lot of the other biometric ID videos I've done before, including the butt recognition video, was whether gait is actually a unique feature that we can use to reasonably identify people in the first place. The short answer to that question is yes, we're all anatomically unique and our anatomy affects our gait. And so you can use information about people's gaits to identify them solely based on that, as long as you already know who that information belongs to. At the same time though, our gait changes when we're wearing different clothing, when we're wearing different shoes, when we're carrying a suitcase or wearing a backpack or pulling luggage. So it's not like we have one gait all the time. Additionally, if we're assuming that we're using video footage of a person to analyze their gait, that brings in the added complication of angles and lighting and whatever else might be in the frame of the shot, as well as the resolution of the video. So it can be very hard to actually identify someone via their gait. In short, while gait is probably a unique feature that is associated with each and every one of us, it's also a dynamic feature that's always changing based on what we're wearing and what we're doing and how we happen to be moving our bodies at the moment. So developing an algorithm that could perform gait recognition in all of those settings accurately every single time is kind of hard. However, video isn't the only way of tracking someone's gait. This was actually research that I came across when I was starting my PhD at MIT because I was interested in this lab, but there's a lab called Signal Kinetics in the MIT Media Lab that researches applications of wireless sensing and develops tools and algorithms to help you monitor people by transmitting signals through walls. In fact, some of their research focuses on using radio frequency signals to capture representations of people's bodies 
through walls in the same way that the camera on the Xbox Kinect does when you play Just Dance. Additionally, in preliminary studies, they've been able to identify different people in the room based on these signals and based on these skeletons. There's also been preliminary work on embedding sensors in floors to recognize gate that way. And of course, a lot of work on designing computer vision systems to analyze images to capture features related to gait and related to how your body moves when you move that can be used to identify people. But so far we've only talked about preliminary studies, so you're probably wondering whether or not anyone's using this in real life. And the answer is yes. A Chinese company is currently commercializing a gate recognition system used on surveillance footage. Importantly, it can't be used in real time, so you can only take existing footage and run it through their program in order to perform your gate analysis, but they do claim upwards of 90% accuracy rates using their system, which as far as I can tell have not been confirmed by any other third party source. So whether or not that's true is an open question. But as we've talked about in other videos, that can often be the underlying concern when it comes to using emerging technologies this way, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence. A lot of the time things are deployed with high accuracy rates on specific data sets or claims of high accuracy rates on unseen data sets, but we don't actually know if it works and we often don't know that it's not working until someone experiences unfortunate consequences from it or until someone looks back through the data and analyzes it to see whether or not the outcomes of this algorithm actually match the expected result. So should you be worried about gate recognition? Honestly, I think that it has a lot of interesting positive application for things in sports medicine, for things in physical training and athletics. As someone who's been involved in athletics since I was a kid, I've seen a lot of really interesting applications in that area, and I think that that's really exciting, as well as for healthcare rehabilitation, outpatient rehabilitation for people who can have systems that can analyze changes in their movement at home. I think that there's a lot of great applications there. At the same time, I definitely have concerns from a surveillance and personal privacy perspective, but it seems like the difficulty of actually identifying people based on their gait from standard surveillance footage when people might be wearing different clothing or carrying different bags or the footage might just suck makes it so that we're probably okay for now. But if you'd like to be part of making sure that these systems are used for good, there are a lot of tools out there to help you do so. So if you wanna try your hand at developing a gate recognition algorithm, but you aren't sure where to start, I'd highly recommend checking out Brilliant's courses on neural networks to get started. Brilliant is a website and app that has courses on everything from the basics of math, science, and computer science to quantum computing, cryptocurrencies, and machine learning. Their courses are laid out like a story, broken down to pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. When it comes to building your first machine learning model, Brilliant has courses for anyone at any stage in their AI journey, whether you want to start with computer science fundamentals or you need a refresher on Python programming. The best part is there's no tests, no grades. You can just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get going. Feeling stuck or made a mistake? You can read the explanations to find out more and learn at your own pace. If you've been meaning to start your machine learning journey this year, or if you're interested in getting started in another STEM field, click on the link in the description down below or visit brilliant.org slash Jordan to sign up for free. In fact, the first 200 people to go to that link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Otherwise, if you like this video, let me know by smashing the like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also check out the video that I did using AI to try to fix my squat form. That was a lot of fun. And if you're into gate recognition, that would probably be a cool place to start. Otherwise, you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and probably other socials that I'll have in the description box down below. And I will see you on Monday. Bye.